Hi there, when you're just getting started with color grading in DaVinci Resolve, the primary color wheels are the first place you're gonna to start to start changing the footage and shaping both the colors and also the brightness. Let's head into Resolve and I'll show you how to use them. Make sure you've got the primary color wheels open. You might be on one of these other pages. Just click here to open up the color wheels. The main things you're going to be focusing on in this section are the lift, gamma, gain, and offset controls. This is sometimes known as LGGO. Each of these lift, gamma, gain, offset controls looks very similar. We've got this reset button, which will reset any changes just to this specific section. We've got this wheel, we've got these numbers, and we've got this thing here. If you hold down your mouse button on this and move it left and right, you can think of this as a dial, which we can turn. As we turn it, you can see this bar moving around the circle. To reset changes just for lift, click this reset button. So what's the difference between lift, gamma, gain, and offset in DaVinci Resolve? Just going to go to the next clip by clicking here, and this is just a simple grayscale gradient. We've got complete black on the left and complete white on the right. I'm also going to open up the scope called waveform. The waveform allows us to visualize the brightness levels of the image. On the left of the image is on the left of the scope, and the right of the image is on the right of this scope. And the values zero to 100 represent zero as complete black and 100 as complete white. This is currently a nice straight line because the gradient is going from zero or black to 100 or white. Let's start off with the lift section. I'm gonna use the wheel down here to alter the value of this lift section. This is going to alter the brightness, but if I move it to the right, you can see the image gets brighter. And if I move it to the left, the image gets darker, but it's not affecting the whole image the same. Click here to reset. The lift section is all about changing the darker areas of the image, whether that's changing the colors in those darker areas or changing the brightness in those darker areas. So I'm gonna slowly increase this lift dragging the mouse to the right to increase the brightness. As I've done that, you can see a couple of interesting things have happened. This white section on the left hasn't really changed, nor has this middle section changed to that much, but the blacks are no longer black, they're gray. I'm gonna reset that and do it again and watch what happens in this scope. As I'm increasing the value for lift, the darker areas are getting brighter and it's moving up the left side of that line, but it's not changing the right side as much as I'm increasing this. Most of the changes are focused in the darker areas of the original image. Let's take a look next at gamma. Gamma affects more of the middle areas of the image. It doesn't affect the extremes of the bright or dark parts. I'm gonna slowly start to increase gamma and look what's happening in the image. Those middle areas are getting brighter, but the black area isn't really getting brighter, at least not to the point of being white, and the white area isn't getting as bright either. I'm gonna reset that, and this time I'm gonna do the same thing, drag the mouse button to the right, watch what happens in the waveform. As I'm increasing the gamma, we're getting a curve now in this waveform. Those middle sections are getting brighter, but it's not actually moving the complete zero black point or complete white point. And if we make it darker, we get a curve going this way. I'm just gonna reset that and come back to lift. Remember, as I increased lift, this point actually changed. We're moving that black point up and down, but with gamma, the black point here and the white point stay locked in. That means we get a subtle change between black and white and not suddenly a fall off a cliff. Okay, let's move on to gain next. You can think of gain as the opposite of lift in that it affects mostly the brighter areas and leaves the darker areas alone. I'm gonna to start to increase the gain and you can see it's affecting these brighter areas of this grayscale, but it's not changing the dark or black areas as much. If you go to a complete extreme like this, it's still not affecting that absolute black point. And as I decrease this, watch what happens on the graph. That line comes back, and if I hold the mouse button down and drag to the left for gain, it's affecting the bright parts of the image and bringing that line down. Click to reset. Okay, let's move on to offset. Just make sure everything's reset, and I'm going to grab this offset wheel and start moving it to the right. Watch what happens in the image first. You can see how the image is generally overall getting brighter equally in the darker and brighter areas. And as I continue to increase it, eventually everything will go completely white. I'm going to click here to reset. 
I'll do the same thing again, this time watch the scopes. You can see that this line is not being changed into a curve, but the entire line is being moved up. That means both the black and the white point are being increased at the same time. And if I move it down, we can go below those points to darken off the entire image. The lift, gamma, gain and offset controls are not just about altering the brightness of the image, they can also adjust the colors. The way the colors are affected behave similarly to how the brightness got affected. If I take this little dot here and just drag it up and to the left, we start to get red introduced into the image. But you can see the red change has mostly affected the darker areas of the image. The white areas up here have stayed white. And the more you push this up and away from the center, the brighter the red gets. But as I'm moving this around, you can see that it's affecting the darker and shadow areas more than the bright areas. I'm gonna double click this dot to reset that. Let's do the same thing for gamma. We'll add a bit of red as we did before. But gamma is now affecting more of the middle of the image and down into the shadow areas but it's not affected the absolute black point of the image too much and as you drag this around you can see the changes are happening we can use the gain color to affect mostly the brighter areas of the image in terms of color changing so if i move this around you can see that those brighter areas are changing they're getting more colorful but the darker areas of the image aren't being as affected quite as much and finally we can affect the colors for the entire image by moving the offset dot around so this is not going to favor the brighter or darker areas it's going to apply those color changes more evenly across the whole image whether it's brighter or darker areas you you can see here it's actually affected the complete blacks and the complete whites. Double click to reset. Most of the time, but not always, you want your blacks and your shadow areas to not be tainted with any particular color cast. You want them to stay fairly neutral and not be too red or too blue or too green. And that's why changing colors with the lift control can be more problematic because it will alter the shadows and black areas in terms of color casts. That's not to mean that you never can use lift to alter the colors of those darker areas. You just have to be careful when doing it. All right, now we've got all of that theory out of the way let's go and color grade a real image using lift gamma gain and offset so increasing the offset will increase the brightness of the entire image quite evenly and decreasing it will make the entire image darker if I move the gain to the right and increase the gain, that's going to increase the brightness of the already bright areas. I'll just reset that and watch what happens in the highlights on my face. If I'm increasing the gain, those highlight areas are being affected and also the sky, but it's not really affecting the shadow areas on my t-shirt. If we increase the gamma, it's going to increase the middle parts of the image. And if we decrease the gamma, it's going to decrease those middle parts of the image. Just reset that. But watch what happens in the highlights on my face here. As I'm increasing the gamma, it's not getting too severe in terms of the roll off between the complete bright and not so bright areas. And if I decrease the gamma, it's kind of maintaining a softness to that transition between those really bright parts of my forehead and the not quite so bright parts of my head. And remember, that's because the gamma control maintains those fixed points for the bright point and the dark point, and it creates those curves which even out those changes between dark and light parts. Just reset gamma. And for lift, if I increase the lift, it's going to favor increasing the shadow areas. You can see my t-shirt is being more affected by the lift and also some of the shadow parts of my face. And if I make this darker by dragging to the left, it's going to make the darker parts of the image even darker. But as I'm doing this, you can see the highlight area on my face is not really being affected that much. One thing to remember about color grading is it's partly technical and it's partly artistic. So there is no one correct way every shot should look. Every different colorist is going to grade it slightly differently. Every different client is going to want a slightly different look. So don't be too hard on yourself when you're first color grading that things don't look perfect. Because even though there's a difference between bad, good and professional. You don't wanna let that stop you from starting to learn color grading. Okay, let's do a very quick grade of this. Let's go and start with the gain, just so we can soften off those bright areas on my forehead. Next, I'm gonna to come to the gain and I'm going to increase that to open up the image a bit. Then we can come to the lift and we can decide what we want to do with those shadow areas. And depending on how moody we want to go, we can drop that even more. And maybe I'll just increase that gamma a 
bit, increase that gain a bit. So this is what it looked like before, and this is what it looks like afterwards. It's a pretty subtle change. We can come to the offset wheel now and we can set the overall brightness of this image however we want. But what about the colors in this image? If we wanted to adjust all of the colors across the entire image, regardless of the bright or dark areas, we can hold down the mouse button on this offset dot and then drag it around to create the look that we want. If I drag it down to the bottom right, it's gonna cool off the image. And if I drag it up to the top left, it's going to warm up the image. This is what it looked like before, and this was shot at sunrise, so it was quite a warm looking image. And this is what it looks like now with those color grading changes applied. If you wanted to alter the colors of just the brighter areas, you can drag the gain wheel around, and this is going to affect more of the brighter areas of the image. And if we want to affect the colors of more of the dark areas, we can move the lift. Now you understand how to change both colors and brightness of an image, you'll definitely want to watch this video next to learn how to use multiple nodes to really supercharge your color grading workflow. I'm Jason Roberts, please subscribe and hopefully I'll see you in the next video. Bye.